Hey guys, how you doing? So I know it's been a while since I've posted any videos about <clears throat> what's been going on with my rifle and the load development process that I've been going through. So I kind of want to bring you guys up to speed of kind of where I'm at. So after put the rifle together, I went ahead and prepped a virgin brass to get it fire formed so I can actually start the load development process in itself. And what I did to the the brass, turned all the necks, I uniformed all the primer pockets and used the flash hole reamer uh, to pretty much uniform the flash holes on all, every single piece of the brass prior to, to shooting it. I shot the first round, put about 200 uh, rounds through my rifle, first fire formed. Took measurements before and after, and then I also full length sized it, annealed and loaded up um, some low charge, nothing too crazy, and then fire form room again. I personally like fire forming my brass twice before I actually start for, uh, the load development process to get a good load for my rifles. So after I did that, in essence, I put about 400 rounds through my rifle and now my brass is completely fire formed to my chamber in my barrel. And now what I started to do is, okay, now I got to figure out what my charge weight is going to be. Uh, but before I get a charge weight, I need to know kind of where I need to start as far as the seating depth goes. And how I do it, and this is what I learned from watching Eric Cortina, uh, his videos on load development and his process with an F class shooter and very knowledgeable and very easy to understand. And he's really good at explaining the process that he goes through to start his load development and, you know, shoot up to a thousand yards with pretty really good accuracy. So he's got a video uh, on his channel. I'll put it in, in the description below. It's how to find jam in your barrel. And that's what I used. In essence, you take a, an empty case, uh, preferably that's already been fire formed to your chamber, uh, full length size it, and you load a bullet into it, but load it longer as far as the seating depth goes. Strip your bolt to get the fire paint out. And what you do is put die wax on the ogive of the bullet. Take measurements before to kind of see where you're at. Put it into your chamber, close the bolt. And what that does is being that the bullet's seated longer, the barrel actually seats the bullet deeper in at the jam point. The bullet can't go any deeper into the barrel. And because of this process, you're at as far, uh, as long as the, your cartridge is gonna be with the bullet in it. So with the, the die wax that's on the ogive and it's already seated, the bolts close, slam the bolt open, uh, take your bullet out and then you measure and this is what your jam point is. So my jam point on my barrel, the way that's set up and everything that I did was 2.550 inches. Now, taking that, I subtract 20 thousands off of it to 2.530 and that's where I start my load development to get my charge weights. And you, that's a really quick, fast explanation of it, but Eric Cortina also has another video uh, talking about uh, why not to chase your lands and it goes into depth of that process of it too. So um, starting at jam minus 20, I did, was at 2.530 and I used Satterley's ladder method to uh, find a nice node of what my velocity is going to be at the muzzle. And I found two specific nodes. One was around, it varied between 2850 to 10, uh, 2870 feet per second. And then another node on the higher end of it was uh, between 2890 and 2920. So what I went ahead and did is when I came back, I loaded uh, those specific nodes. And what I'm going to do is go back out to the range and shoot a string and kind of document, kind of see which one's gonna be my, my final load that I'm gonna be working with. Um, I'm not too worried about, you know, getting as fast of a bullet coming out of my, at the muzzle, you know, up 2900, I mean, 2850, even if I could get something there, as long as it's consistent, low ES, I'm gonna be content with it. You know, I'm not looking out to go out past too much, you know, 
past a thousand yards. And if I do great for target shooting, but my application is going to be primarily for it's a hunting rifle and I want to be able to be comfortable up until that point. So, uh, but plugging in all that information, even with the 2850 muzzle velocity, it's going to have plenty of velocity downrange, plenty of energy to take down the animal that I, that I plan on harvesting. So um, that's kind of a little quick rundown. I'm going to be going out to the range here pretty soon. And I'll afterwards, I'll bring down the target too, like I, and show you guys kind of what it looks like and give you some numbers just so you know, you know, how it worked for me and kind of where I'm at. Right. Real quick, just some clarification. Uh, the measurements that I was talking about before, the 2.530 and the 2.55 uh, jam or jam minus 20, what I'm referring to is cartridge base to ogive. What that is, is for those who don't know, the measurement where the base of the cartridge to the ogive of the bullet, the ogive is where the bullet engages the rifling inside of your barrel. So taking, using a book comparator, what I'm gonna be doing is taking this measurement right there, and 2.530. So all of my uh, bullets here, or cartridges that I've got set up, these are all set up to 2.530. Just wanted to make that clarification for those who didn't know what type of measurement I was taking. All right. So here are the results. Using H1000 powder, I loaded between 66.0 grains up to 67.7 grains and went out and shot not once but actually like three times because I was having issues with what I was experiencing downrange. Either maybe the chronograph wasn't getting my the muzzle velocities or environmental factors and I'll cover that here shortly. So in essence what I ended up choosing was 66.7 grains of H1000 powder with a bullet, that, well, the bullet that I'm using is Hornady's 180 grain ELD match bullets seated at 2.530 inches. And what I was talking about right before this was, you know, cartridge base to ogive. That's the measurement that I'm using. So the first string where I went out I shot out, uh, I started at 66 and you know, I got a nice note between 66 to 66.4 grains. And that was the one I was talking about. It was about 2860 muzzle velocity average or so. But the issue why I didn't really like that one too much is I was getting extreme spread that was, you know, in the thirties and forties, was a real big fan of that. So I still kept moving it up and I found another note between 66.6 .6 and 66.8. And as you can see on my chart right over here, uh, at 66.6, uh, I got an ES of 23 and an SD of 11 with an average velocity of 29.26. And cutting that in half at 66.7, I got an ES of 14 and an SD of seven, with average velocity of 2,900. 66.8, uh, an ES of 34 and an SD of 17, average of 29.10. So uh, I kind of narrowed it down to that area. All the other ones were, you know, higher SDs or very inconsistent SDs. And as I started going up, Hornady's uh, max low listed at 67.4. And I sort of started to see a little bit of pressure shine press, excuse me, pressure signs. And when I bumped it up another uh, tenth of a grain, I clearly saw pressure signs. So I backed it off. I'm like, hey, I'm not going to go down that route. And over, so I started narrowing in at the 66.7. This was probably the second volley that I shot. So I came back, reloaded it all over again. And I went and shot the same string, these three right here, the 66.6 to 68 or 66.8. And the one charge weight that was consistent across the board from the first time I shot it to the second to the third was 66.7. It was consistently around that 2,900 muzzle velocity average and, and low ES and SD. And what I consider like a low ES for me is sub 20 feet per second, right? So being that that was the more consistent one across all training, 
and uh, testing, this is what I decided to go with. So this is gonna be 66.7 grains of H1000 powder that I'm setting my charge weight to where I can actually start the seating depth testing of my uh, load that I'm gonna plan on shooting. And this is on a Tika firearm. It's a, got a 24 inch proof research barrel and I am using 180 grain ELD match bullets, seven millimeter. And so what I did is, okay, this is what I chose, 66.7. Now, what I'm gonna do here, and don't mind this number, this is just me monitoring how many rounds I've fired through my barrel, just so I can keep track of um, barrel uh, wear out, or you know, if it's gonna be, get to a point where I need to change out the barrel. But either which way. So, I got, 66.7 grains of H1000 powder. So what I plan, or what I've done actually, is I've loaded three rounds at each of these measurements. And how I did was, so 2.530, this is what I set the charge to using this testing method right over here. Lower three rounds here. And moving down, I've subtracted three thousandths of the seating depth and with the same charge weight. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go out and shoot to see which one of these is gonna be the, get, gonna give me the best group. And what I'm hoping for is at least get two measurements from these that have consistent group sizes where I can use, okay, you know what? That's gonna be my seating depth that I'm gonna be using moving forward with this charge weight. And hopefully it's gonna prove consistency and reliability moving forward. That's kind of what it is right now. Uh, I wasn't able to pull up the targets of, you know, the ones that I've shot in the past using, you know, testing the, the load charge weight of everything. Issues that came up were uh, the wind. I was exp on two of the shootings that I went out, wind was blowing 15 to 20 miles an hour. I had an instance where targets fell off, the actual uh, target uh, frame fell out. So, don't even mind that. That's why you don't have actual group sizes to compare with. However, at this point, what I was doing is I wanted to get the charge weight. Consistent velocities, a low ES and low SD. Using that, this is what we're doing right now. Now we're going to seating depth to, find, to tune in the load and move forward so I can have consistent uh, results moving down range. All right, more stuff to come, guys. If you guys have any questions, hit me up. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this and this was uh, educational for you guys. All right.